Hello everyone, today we're adding a jersey into a t-shirt quilt. My name is Lisa, I'm with Lisa Cape and Quilts. If this is your first time joining me, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll get notified when I add new videos. And I love to make t-shirt quilts and make videos all about different ways to do that. So today I have a jersey and uh, I've been asked several times, how do you add a jersey into your t-shirt quilts? And first I just want to say that there's several different ways you can do that. And I'm just showing you my favorite preferred way of adding jerseys. However, if you do a search on YouTube, there's many other video creators who have different ways of doing this. And so if you've never added a jersey into a quilt, I highly recommend going through and watching several different videos and choosing a method that works best for you. Today I'm going to show you my favorite way. <laughs> so in some other videos you'll see uh, quilt makers use heat and bond light products on the back side of their jerseys and I think that is a very good way to go. You will be using quite a bit of heat and bond product but it works really well. I'll tell you the reason why I don't usually do it this way is because a lot of my jerseys have the holes or the mesh. And when the holes are bigger, if you apply heat and bond light to the back side of this, sometimes when the light shines just right, you can see the shiny bits of the adhesive through the holes. So what I like to do is actually back my t-shirt block with another t-shirt uh, that isn't being used like the back side of a t-shirt that you've used the front logo and you have all the extra back fabric that isn't being used instead of discarding this we're going to go ahead and use it on the back side of our jersey block so what I've done is I've already prepared this t-shirt and I'll just show you a little clip here in case you've never uh, ironed interfacing onto the back side of a shirt. My favorite interfacing is the Pellon P44F. It is very lightweight. You can see the movement in this shirt. And I've pressed it to the back side or the, the uh, inside of my t-shirt so that the pretty side of the shirt is what we're going to adhere to the back side of our jersey. I hope I'm not confusing you. <laughs> so I've already pressed on the interfacing just to save us a little bit of time and we're ready to uh, cut this shirt apart. If you've never seen uh, how to cut your shirt apart, I do have a video for that. I'll link it in the description box in case this is your first ever t-shirt quilt and you're not quite sure where to start. Go check that video out and then come back going to go ahead and pause this video, cut apart my shirt, and I'm going to show you what we do next. So here we are. I've separated the front of the jersey from the back. You could certainly save this and use it somewhere else in your quilt. <laughs> Today I'm going to be using the back of the jersey because it has the name and the number. One thing you'll notice is that on this jersey, for this block, I have some solid area and some area that has the mesh with the holes in it. So your jersey might all be solid. It might have a combination like mine does, or it might be all the mesh material with the holes that you can see through. All the jerseys are different. So you could apply this technique to all of them. So I've already determined my block size for uh, this quilt and everything that you see underneath of my clear acrylic ruler will be the block. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, bring in my white t-shirt. Now I'll tell you, a lot of people when they're messing, what they're working, when they're working with the jerseys, always check the uh, care tag and the first thing they notice is instructions that say do not iron or press. Uh, I've always been able to work with my jerseys with my iron, but I highly recommend reducing the heat temperature on your iron. Instead of using a high cotton setting, maybe reduce that down to uh, a low cotton setting or a synthetic setting on your iron. Uh, this method, we won't be doing a lot of pressing inside the block, but we will be pressing our seams when we add our blocks together. 
And so reducing the temperature on your iron works just fine. So I have my white t-shirt and today we're just going to use white so that maybe you can see that the contrast between the white and the orange. My interfacing is going to be down on my mat and we're going to have the pretty side of the shirt facing up and we just want to lay that down nice and smooth onto uh, our table. I'll tell you what to go ahead and get this flippity part out of the way. I'm just going to cut off the neckline of the shirt so that everything lays nice and flat. So there we go. It's going to behave much better. <laughs> so now we can bring in our jersey right over top of the white shirt. And what it's going to look like, especially if you have a jersey that has bigger holes that you really can see through, is it's just going to look like you have a shirt underneath of your jersey. And a lot of the times players wear t-shirts or um, tank tops or something underneath your jersey. So that's just what it's going to look like in your quilt. Now one thing you'll notice about a lot of jerseys is you have all of these weird seams. You have a seam here. You have seams coming down here. You have seams around the name. Sometimes you have embroidery work. All of these seams will sometimes play a little bit of havoc and getting everything to lay nice and flat and that is just the nature of working with a jersey. Uh, the more seams that you have in here, the more rippling that you might have to deal with. But in the end, uh, I think it all blends in well and it kind of shows the nature of a jersey when it's in your quilt anyway. So I would try to get these out, but if you can't get everything to lay down nice and flat, it's all going to be okay. Especially if you're doing quilting within your block, that'll help reduce the look of any sagging wrinkles uh, in your jersey. So I have it positioned right over top of my white t-shirt and I'm just making sure that everywhere my block is going to be cut has the t-shirt underneath and we are good. So instead of using heat and bond light, what I like to do is to bring in some Fabri-Tac glue. This is a uh, clear, you can see how clear that is, fabric glue that is permanent once it's dry. And it's flexible, you could sew through it if you needed to. If you get some uh, along the edge of your block, uh, you don't have to worry because the glue will be dry. You can sew through your seams if there's glue there and uh, it's not going to mess up your sewing machine. And it's flexible too and so you'll have the movement within your block uh, that's just like the rest of your t-shirts. So this is what I'm going to use and we're going to take the lid off and we're going to do this in sections. We're going to apply the Fabri-Tac generously <laughs> all through this white part of the t-shirt. So I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up or not, but I'm just doing little lines of glue just like this throughout that whole section of white. And then we're just going to bring in the jersey and lay that down and go ahead and smooth it out. Just like that. And sometimes you can work out a little bit of the fullness of your block that way. Now this glue dries pretty quick. So after pressing a little bit, we could go ahead and lift up this part of the shirt and start working our way down. Now I know that my block is not going to extend out this far, but I'm going to go ahead and apply some glue right to the edge of that white shirt just to make sure that I'm covered. Just like this. Now what I like about using this glue is you don't really see this through the mesh 
if your holes are bigger, like you would uh, the heat and bond light because that's a solid sheet of adhesive. So we'll work our way down and bring down this part of the shirt. Now we can go ahead and work out some of the fullness if you're able to do that. I also like this glue because very rarely does it seep through the jersey material showing any spots on the front. You can see I was pretty generous with that glue and I have no glue spots coming through my jersey. So just like that, we'll scoot this up. And now we just have this smaller section. I have fuzzy bits everywhere. <laughs> and we'll adhere this bottom section. I know my block does not extend down this far, but we're gonna do this for video purposes. And we're just adding lines of glue. So it's not a solid coverage, however, there's glue throughout the white part. And now we'll bring down this last part. See if I can't work out some of that fullness right there. And in that funny seam. So there we go. We've glued down this jersey to the white shirt. And because this glue dries pretty quick, uh, we don't have to wait very long. I'm going to wait maybe 10-15 uh, minutes before we cut out our block. And then uh, I will show you that part so that you can see what it's like to work with the two layers. Now that we've let this sit for a few minutes and dry, we're ready to go ahead and cut out our block. So I just have my acrylic ruler. We're going to position this exactly where we want to cut out our block. So give me just a minute to get this right. I'm two and a half inches away from the left side of the name and two and a half inches from the right side. So we're centered and everything looks really, really good. So the next thing we do is just go ahead and cut out our block and we're cutting through both the jersey and the white t-shirt at the same time now. We're now treating this as one unit. <laughs> Move this down just a little bit. So using our rotary cutter, we can go ahead and cut out our block. like you see here. Now because the camera's in the way, I cannot position myself over here to cut out these sides, so I'm just going to do it while we're uh, filming just like this. However, I highly recommend that you do not cut towards yourself. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to do when you're filming a video. So now we can come over on this side. <clears throat> cut all the way through that. It usually cuts easier, however I'm standing at a weird angle. <laughs> Trying not to cut myself. There we go. <laughs> course I have technical difficulties while I'm filming. So here's our block 
and we'll take a look at the back side. So now our t-shirt, the white t-shirt, is adhered permanently to our uh, jersey. And it's all one unit, just like this. And now you treat this just like any other t-shirt that you were adding to your quilt. Now you may notice, because we didn't do a solid coverage with the glue, that some of your edges of jersey might be a little bit loose, but that's okay because those edges are going to be sewn into your seams. So you add this just like you would any other t-shirt. And this is my preferred method for adding jerseys into my quilts. Let's turn it that way so you can see it. <laughs> So I hope you have found this helpful. Remember when you're pressing to just reduce the uh, temperature on your iron when you're pressing the seams around this block and you should have no issues pressing your seams and we've avoided using the heat throughout the rest of this block by using the Fabri-Tac glue. So I hope you find this helpful. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below if you try this method for adding jerseys in your quilt and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all really soon. Have fun creating. Bye, everyone.